All right, in this video, we're going to be doing some example problems, finding the area between curves. All right, so we have our first problem up on the board. Uh, find the area enclosed by y equals two sine of x and y equals two cosine of x. And uh, we also have our x bounds, which is x equals zero and x equals pi over two. All right, so to find the first step in finding the area between the curves, we need to draw the graphs. All right, and we want to of course be able to locate the area that we want to find okay so let's do a drawing down here all right we have x equals zero all right so x equals zero and x equals pi over two okay and we have our two graphs of two sine of x and two cosine of x so we can set two right here let's start off by drawing two cosine of x all right and 2 cosine of x is going to go right through pi over 2. And then 2 sine of x is going to come up. All right. And it basically kind of just looks like an x. Actually, it's not going to do that. It's going to peak out at 2 and then, of course, curve back. Anyways, all right. What area are we trying to find here? Well, it needs to be bounded by these two curves and between 0 and pi over 2. So we're trying to find this area right here in this area right here okay the first area we'll call area one and the second area we'll call area two all right so we know that we have one intersection point okay so that's going to be our second step we want to find the intersection point all right and since we know our trig graphs all right we don't really need to, to do all this algebra to figure out where our intersection point is we know that it's going to be at pi over four Right, right in the middle. Okay. So at pi over four, our top graph switches to become our bottom graph. Okay. So to start off, our top graph is cosine, and then to end it, our top graph is sine. Okay. So the third step is going to be to set up our equation with the right variable. All right. We can just integrate with respect to x. All right. So we don't have to worry about anything there. And let's set up our equation. So we have the integral from zero to pi over four all right we're going to set that one up first and remember our top graph is cosine so it's going to be two cosine of x minus two sine of x dx all right then we're going to add on our second area all right and our second area is going to be the the area from oops from pi over four to pi over two and that's going to be 2 sine of x minus 2 cosine of x. All right, great. Now we can do a little bit of manipulation before we integrate just to make the, the integral a little bit easier. By that, I mean we can take out that 2. All right, little stuff like that that we can do. So we can actually take out a 2 of the whole entire thing, but I'll show you it step by step. Uh, to the integral of 0 to pi over 4 of cosine of x minus sine of x dx and then plus to the integral from pi over 4 to pi over 2 of sine of x minus cosine of x dx okay so we can take a 2 out of this entire thing but I don't want to really rewrite that whole thing so we can just integrate now so if we are to integrate here, what do we end up with? Well, the integral of cosine is going to be sine. And the integral of negative sine is going to be cosine. So we get plus cosine of x. All right. And we have two times that. And it's going to be evaluated from zero to pi over four. All right. And then we're going to add two times. Well, what's going to be in here? We're going to have the integral of sine of x, which is going to be negative cosine. And we have the integral of negative cosine, which is going to be negative sine. So we're going to get minus sine of x. And that's going to be all evaluated from pi over 4 to pi over 2. All right. So now we just have to do our evaluations and we're set. All right. So first off, now we should factor out that 2 out of the whole thing, uh, make it a little bit easier as we go. So 2 times, well, we have sine of pi over 4 
plus cosine of pi over 4 minus sine of 0 plus cosine of 0. All right, and then we have plus, it's going to be a negative cosine to the pi over 2 minus sine of pi over 2. And you're going to have that minus, we can draw that minus down here, and have it be negative cosine to the pi over 4 minus sine pi over 4. All right, and now we just are going to have to figure out what all of these are, okay? And of course, we have our big parentheses on the end here. Don't want to forget that. So we have 2 times the sine of pi over 4 and the cosine of pi over 4, both rad 2 over 2. So we get rad 2 over 2 plus rad 2 over 2. All right, and then that's going to be minus, well, sine of 0 is 0, cosine of 0 is 1. So we're going to get a minus 1 here. All right, and then we get a plus uh, negative cosine of pi over 2 minus uh, sine of pi over 2. All right, both of those are, well, cosine of pi over 2 is going to be 0, and sine of pi over 2 is going to be 1. So we're going to get a minus 1 there. All right, and we also have our minus, so we have a minus here. And we have a negative cosine of pi over 4 minus sine of pi over 4. We know that we're going to get a rad 2 over 2 here and a rad 2 over 2 here. All right, they're both going to get subtracted. So we're going to have minus a rad 2 over 2 minus rad 2 over 2. And we can distribute this negative to the rad 2 over 2s here. Make this positive, make this positive. Okay, so we're going to end up with 2 times what well, we have a 2 rad 2 over 2 here, uh, and then we have another 2 rad 2 over 2 here, so we get 4 rad 2 over 2, which is just 2 rad 2, and then we have a minus 2 here. Alright, so then we can distribute our 2, we get 4 rad 2 minus 4. Alright, and that is going to be our answer for this problem. All right. So, of course, all we did, just to recap, we drew our graph, we found our area that we, you know, that we needed to find, and we found our intersection point, we set up our equation with the right variable, and we integrated. All right. The most tedious process here is just going to be the, inter the integration part. They're going to probably throw some pretty nasty integrals at you, or integrals that require a lot of this stuff, a lot of, a lot of evaluating. All right, so here's our next problem. We need to find the area enclosed by y equals x minus 1 and y squared equals 2x plus 6. All right, I went ahead and drew the graph for this problem. This is probably something that you're going to need to uh, be able to like get in a graphic calculator. It might be given to you, something like that. But I don't think they're going to make you graph y squared equals 2x plus 6. Unless they ask you to maybe put it in terms of x. I don't know. There's... there's but it's still a pretty complicated graph to, to actually graph. Um, okay, so we already drew our graph. We need to locate the area that we want to find. Well, our area that we want to find here is all this right here. If we integrate with respect to x, look what happens, all right? This is not, this, this graph is not always our top function, all right? It is with respect to, to this bottom graph, our y equals x minus 1. But sometimes it's its bottom graph to itself, all right, which is kind of weird. Like, for example, here, if I take a little cross section here, all right, it's the top and the bottom, all right? So that doesn't really work out too well, all right? We're going to have to try to integrate this with respect to y, all right? So we don't have any intersection points here, all right? And we know that we need to set up this equation with respect to y, all right? So what's going to be our top function? Well, if you remember, our top function is always the, the function that's more to the right, all right? And that is our x minus 1. But we need to put that in terms of x because we're integrating with respect to, or sorry, we need to put that in terms of y because we're integrating with respect to y. So we can manipulate our equation here. We can do that down here, actually. Uh, y equals x minus 1. We add 1 on both sides. We get that x 
equals y plus 1. All right, so that's going to be our top of our equation. So we can do our integral, and we don't know our bounds yet. All right, so we need to have our y plus 1 right here. Okay, and we have our y squared equals 2x plus 6, okay? And that needs to get put in terms of y as well. So, y squared equals 2x plus 6. We need to subtract 6 on both sides, so we get y squared minus 6 equals 2x. We're going to divide by 2 on both sides, and we get that x is equal to 1 half y squared minus 3. Okay, so those are our two equations. So now we know that we're going to be subtracting a 1 half y squared minus 3. All right, and then we're going to have a dy on the end. Okay, so when I said we don't have to find any intersection points, I was talking about anything like in between, but we do need to find these two points right here. Okay, so we need to find out where these graphs are equal to each other. Uh, we can honestly, it doesn't really matter how we do that. But if we want to just take the square root of both sides here, all right, then we can set x minus 1 equal to rad 2x plus 6, all right, because now we have both y's here. Okay, so let's do that. We need x minus 1, oops, that's an equal sign. x minus 1 needs to equal rad 2x plus 6. All right, and what we're going to have to do here is square both sides. All right, and we get that x squared minus 2x plus 1 is going to be equal to 2x plus 6. We subtract 2x, subtract 6. All right, and then we're going to get x squared minus 4x minus 5 is going to be equal to 0. All right, let's see if we can factor this. All right, I'll do my little x contraption here. Are there two numbers that can add to be negative 4 and multiply to be negative 5? Well, we have, we could have 1 and 5. All right, in that case, we would need a negative 5 and a positive 1. All right, so now we know that we can set this up as x plus 1, x minus 5 equals 0, x equals negative 1, x equals 5. So these are going to be our x is here, but remember, we need our bounds to be y's as well. So we can just plug it into this easy equation up here, our y equals x minus 1. When we do that, we get, so y equals x minus 1, y equals, we can do negative 1 minus 1, which is negative 2, and y equals 5 minus 1, which is 4. So now we know we need a 4 and a negative 2. So we're integrating from negative 4, or sorry, from negative 2 to 4. All right, so we can now integrate, okay? That's our final step. Okay, when we do integrate, we're going to get that the integral from negative 2 to 4 of what well, we have a plus minus plus. We can just distribute that negative 1. So we end up with a minus 1 half y squared plus y plus 4 dy. All right, and now we're able to integrate here. So now when we integrate this, we are going to get, well, we have a negative one half y squared. That's gonna end up being negative one over six y cubed plus y squared over two plus four y. And then we have that in it, that um, evaluated from negative four to, or sorry, negative two to four. And now we can just evaluate so negative 1 over 6 4 cubed plus 4 squared over 2 plus 4 times 4 and then we're going to have that minus we have a negative 1 over 6 y is going to be negative 2 cubed plus 4 over 2 I already I guess I already put that negative 2 through and then we have uh, plus 4 times negative 2 which is negative 8 Okay, so now we just do our algebra here. We have 64 over 6. 
and negative 64 over 6. So negative 64 over 6 plus, it's going to be 16 over 2, which is 8. We got 16 over here. And then we have a minus, a, uh, it's going to be a negative 8 times that. It's going to be 8 over 6, which is going to be 4 over 3. Then we have a plus 4 over 2 minus 8. All right, put that all in your calculator and see what you end up getting. All right, so I ended up with 18. All right, and that does it for this video. Okay, area between curves is, isn't really anything too hard once you just get used to it. All right, so I hope this helped, and I will see you guys in the next video.